we're back to Valheim. Our oh. It always takes a while to, to go with our Joe Smithson. Today we're really going to get to put a lot of good time into this game. And one, one thing I know just about me when I stream is that if it's a more intense game like Mario or whatever, where I'm paying more attention, I have arrived. I do. I think, like most people, I end up talking a lot less to everyone in chat just because I'm not looking as much. But I do always like capping the night off with Valheim because it's just a nice chance to talk to- Oh, I don't know if you guys got to see that. It was a nice chance for me to get to talk to him. Also, deforestation is real in this game. Look at that. <laughs> Destroying this part of the forest completely. Yeah, I don't remember who who it was that came in here another day and mentioned this, but it truly does feel like you're lost in the woods just because I think this and oddly enough, Breath of the Wild kind of get the density of a nice forest, right? A density that I don't usually see in other games. And... I, it's just two trees growing inside of And it, it really feels like you're going through the wood, like this look, you kind of see through the woods all the way through the end. And I don't know why I've never seen anything like that before. I feel like it's been done, but I don't remember where or when. It's one of those things. I. It feels like I should have felt that before, like even in Skyrim or something, but it never really felt like that. Like, Skyrim felt a little bit fake for me. But this, and again, Breath of the Wild do it. I wonder if it's the grass or what it is. Because these games really- oh. Can I pull this off? I, I do want to get ready for for the first boss, so I just think what I'm going to be trying to do is get more leather uh, because that will make it so I can make better armor, more protection. I think that that, to me, in any game is what I think is the priority. Do baddies hear me, like, hit stuff and that's when they come? But yeah, every time I start, you know, cutting logs, cutting wood, baddies always show up. So, it makes me, oh boy. She was like trying to climb a mountain in the Skyrim. <laughs> You're just fighting an uphill battle. Literally. No! Almost there, please! Please! Let me make it to the rock. Why are they having such an easy time? Okay. Why do the baddies have such an easy time? So now I need leather scraps and flint. I thought I'd grab like a billion flint. Let me check my stores. <clears throat> I, I was watching another stream and the guy had the on <laughs> genuinely brilliant idea of making a game that's just inventory management and I was like oh that sounds incredible <laughs> I actually find inventory management quite fun <laughs> I think it's a good time okay so we do have enough we really just don't have enough leather scrap beans Beans, you know, a game that I think Chris would really like, and anyone who loves beans would really like, would have been uh, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, because the whole theme of that game is beans. <laughs> if you like beans, that's the game for you. That's one, like, some people are like, yes, naked in the game, yes. <laughs> I'm like, 
It's all right. It's all right. I don't need it. I don't want to be. I don't want to be. TOS. Anytime soon. <laughs> you're not gonna look for most games, especially like something like Cyberpunk. You're not looking at your character ever. Oh, I look so sad. Oh, I'm not. I'm not wet. I'm just too heavy. That's just gravity pulling me down. That's what happens when you. You're carrying too much. Gravity just wants to pull you down like that. Look at the trees I cut down. <laughs> yeah, I was mentioning this earlier. Like, you can see a good patch here. Stupid deer, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, look at this. It's a whole open patch now, just from me doing this. <laughs> Wait, can I cut birch now? It's too hard. I have a better axe though. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna make this island barren by the end. It'll all be brown. Just like how I've done around my home. It's all brown. I don't like the half of it is uppercase and half of it. This lowercase? I don't know why they did that. It looks terrible. <laughs> Not only will I deforest this en entire island, I will also deanimalize. I need to be more careful. Because I don't want to scare the animals before I. Oh, I thought that was an animal. Over there. Oh, it is! Right. And it's the type of animal I need. Ah. Okay, the boars are easier. I can just go up to them and hit them, because they, they're aggressive. Wild and frightened. That could be a show. Well, it is, right? Naked and afraid? Never mind. They've already gotten the idea. Roll it back. Close the Kickstarter. Naked and Afraid, Viking Edition. <laughs> Imagine. That would actually be a good show. Not only would you have to go Naked and Afraid, but you could only do things the way the Vikings did it. It has an extra thing on top of it. So you can't just try to survive. You have to do things how the Vikings did it. And the Vikings could be very extreme at points, so... You know. <laughs> I have to be honest too, one game that I really wanted to play. For some reason, I'm not I'm not a big Assassin's Creed fan. And again, I don't I just I've never truly played an Assassin's Creed game. From beginning to end. I've started multiple of them. <laughs> Go back to my YouTube channel, you can see how many I've started and never finished playing. But back then I literally would play ten minutes of a game and never play it again. Which is terrible for your wallet. <laughs> I spent so much money on games I touched for 10 minutes. Never play them, but love watching them. Yeah, I really wanted to play the the most recent ones, Valhalla. But it's so expensive. <laughs> but I, I would totally I was thinking maybe of even like possibly streaming it. But you know, you know how it is. <laughs> Because I've never really played it, and it seems like people have been- I've only been hearing good things about Valhalla. Some people- it's actually divided. Some people either say really good things, or really bad things. Say it's the most boring one. So, I don't know. But yeah, if, if I had it, be sure that I, I would totally be streaming it. Because I'm curious. To me, it would be a brand new experience. It's not a, that it's boring, it's that it's very long. There's lots to do, and I don't have a problem with that. That's the thing. If a game can can keep me interested and be interesting for a very long time, it doesn't matter how long it is, right? Because you, if you're having fun and you're entertained the entire time, then, the, you know, the game's doing a good job. The problem is if what you mean by saying that it's long is that it, it kind of gets boring after a while. Because that, that would be more of a problem. Again, I don't, I don't know why Valhalla keeps calling to me. Some bugs and movements is a bit janky. 
Although I heard, I, I remember the dinosaur dance. I remember that the old in the old games you can do the dinosaur dance. But like I, I remember some of the memes surrounding the older games and stuff, because those were exceptionally janky. But I haven't really heard that much about Valhalla being buggy or whatnot. I want to get the wet deer. Ooh! I didn't get the wet deer though. Yes! That's satisfying. It's satisfying to hit stuff with a bow like that when it has such a long travel time. <laughs> Ew, wet deer! <laughs> you like the supple, moist deer. <laughs> Supple is another one of those words that, depending on what you put it with, is terrible. <laughs> like, supple can be great. Supple can be the worst word. Hey, piggy, piggy, piggy. Ow! Whoa, these- whoa, whoa! They're gonna kill me! I can't believe I don't have any food. I need to remember to be better about eating food. Oh, hello, deer. No, saturated is the word. Saturated? I think saturated is fine. Maybe it's because I think of it, like, I think of it in the scientific manner. That was my first contact with the word saturated. But I feel like I could totally see if your point of reference with it is like saturated fat and then you pull up images of fat just dripping and oozing then I could see that but to me saturated is just a scientific term so it doesn't really get me plus it it, it has like a very like bam 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 uh thing like I, I don't I don't know how to explain this it's like saturate it has a a very strict rhythm to it. It sounds very precise, at least to me. But where something like moist sounds wet and gross. <laughs> no! I'm just trying to explain why saturated doesn't really get me. Why Why does it get you? Do you have like, what's the memory? What's the thing that bring, it brings up for you? Well, I guess you might not want to be talking about that, but... I'm genuinely curious, because I find that interesting. I feel like saturated is an unusual one. I should stop saying saturated too. <laughs> I don't mean to trigger. I, <laughs> I guess to me it's such a like non-issue. Like it just kind of goes. Yeah, piggy, piggy, piggy. There's one game, one game that I want to. <laughs> I'm not gonna stream the actual game. I want to make a lecture on it and it's Resident Evil 5 and I've mentioned I know that I've mentioned this before like not recently but back when I was streaming maybe in like 2018 and what whatnot but I think it's the textbook story I want to make a lecture stream one day on explaining why Resident Evil 5 story is the most textbook story like, it doesn't get more textbook than that. You can, so much so that you can use Resident Evil 5 to teach a lesson on how to tell a story. That's how basic it is. It's not like basic in a good way either. It's just that it's basic. <laughs> so like, by, by the books, it's literally my definition of by the books, I think of Resident Evil 5. It's, it's just so surface level. It's just so obvious. It's bad. But it's not bad. It's bad because we, we've seen these tropes millions of times, but if you were teaching someone about story, it would just fit perfectly. It would not be good. It would just be the... F it's like baby's first story. It's not going to be good. But it's going to be textbook if they're following it. Like, it's as if someone just copied the formula. They didn't innovate. They didn't do anything with it. They're not like Pixar here, like, doing crazy stuff. Then you know, makes you feel things. They're just... They're just like, whatever. We're, we're literally gonna copy the textbook. And... <laughs> that's Resident Evil 5. 
And I've been saying that for years, and I really want to do a stream like that. Where I just talk about Resident Evil 5. And we go through cutscenes and stuff of it. I think that that would be really fun. Uh, oh, Skelly Boy! Hello, Skelly Boy! It is I, non Skelly Boy. I am Flesh Man. <laughs> it sounds terrible. Flesh Man is here with his supple skin. Oh, bird! Oh, yeah! Ooh, I broke their... their stance. Oh, oh, what's... oh! What is this? Hello, bird. Haven't seen you in a while. Treasure lies below! Delvin Dungeon! Delves and dungeons can be found across the Tenth World. They are mo monuments of the past and most often filled with riches of civilizations long lost. Remember to bring a light source. Bird, you talked to me for so long it's becoming night. Bird. I have to run home. I really just love people's abilities to do different voices. Like, one of my heroes is Mark Hamill. Just because he is... He can control his voice so well. Like, it blew me away, so from what I understand, it, he's blown me away twice. I mean, he's good in many things, but like, when... I guess I have a, ex an extremely high bar for being blown away by stuff like this. But, the two times he blew me away, and I don't have the second one confirmed yet. So I would like to know. Uh, not right now, but I, I would like to figure this out. The first time was in Batman. Batman, uh... Arkham City, the game, where he played Sick Joker. Now, the Joker voice is very unique and very awesome, and, like, he can do it very well, of course. He, he to me, he plays the best Joker. But Sick Joker, like, to make it truly feel like the Joker is sick and, like, coughing and dying, it's like, what? How do you sound like a sick man so well? <laughs> Like, it blew me away when I first heard that back in, like, 2010. The second time was him voicing his young self. I don't know if he did, though. I still need to... Is voicing him his young self in a, t a TV show, which I will not mention the name, because spoilers. Um, but playing his young self as his current old self. And he has a very different voice naturally right now. His voice right now is very raspy. They're like, ah. It sounds a lot more like how the Joker voice used to be. Or is still. He whenever he does the Joker. So he, his voice just naturally became more like the Joker. Um, but him playing his young self, it's... As far as I understand... As far as I understand... When people get older and their voice just becomes that raspier and like kind of... It's not something you can reverse. It's not a voice you can do. You can't do your young voice anymore. That's not how it works. But somehow he managed to do that? Okay, I'm actually gonna... I'm not gonna show it on screen because it might be spoilers for a show that people might be interested in watching right now, but now I'm, I'm way too curious. So he did. Okay. So I don't understand how... how he switches his voice like that. It's crazy. How can he sound like his young self? I genuinely thought, like, to me, that might be like, oh, you sound like yourself? That's easy. But to me, that's unlike, I thought it was impossible. <laughs> so it's on that level for me. So that's why for me, it's super surprising, I guess. Um, yeah, let's see. I didn't think to be a voice actor till I was in high school and I would still love to do it. Yeah, go for it. Especially nowadays where Great microphones are at our, like, everyone's reach. Like, today we... We can do it more than ever. Um... I, I'd say try it. You know, try it. Um... But yeah. I can throw my voice and do different accents. Yeah, and that, isn't it fun? Like, to me, it's, it's one of the most fun things to do. It's voices. I... 
I've loved that since I was little. I remember, this is an interesting thing. When I was in fifth grade, I could do a great Elvis impression, which I cannot do anymore. I don't know why. Uh, I can't do an Elvis impression anymore, but I used to be able to be pretty good at it. But then that was before puberty. When puberty hit, I couldn't do it anymore, which is, again, it's odd. Yeah, I got the love from Jim Carrey and Robin Williams. Yeah. Ooh. Robin Williams is also very good. It's too bad how things ended with him. He, you know, I think so many generations grew up with him, watching his movies and watching his, even like, some people with their his stand-up. And he is a true icon. And... I don't know, he, he was one of those people in the world that felt like he didn't have malice in anything that he did. You know, obviously I don't know the guy. I don't. But... He never seemed to be doing things to... For... with an... Evil intent or anything like that. Like with a... Even with a... Just... Selfish intent. It, it always felt like he was trying to make the world a better place, you know? And again, I don't know if that's true, I don't know if, but especially even like through interviews and stuff like that, he just wanted to make people smile. And I loved him for that. I think I really look up to, um, like I think most of the time you shouldn't be looking up to celebrities, because they're just people and people idolize, you know, people and it, it just doesn't work out, because when you idolize people, it, they're, they're imperfect, right? But I don't idolize anyone. But I, I, do, I did, I always do admire people that are in the public eye. And they are kind and loving and they, they truly, they understand that people are watching them. And they try to be their best selves. Because I think it's, one thing that's sad to me is I see so many celebrities nowadays, it's like they're promoting a bunch of bad stuff. They're promoting being overly selfish, being overly greedy, being over like all these things. Like just look at any rapper, any, like that's all the music is about. And I think maybe the music can be fine and be that, but outside they also act like that. And, and it, I don't know, it just makes me sad because I think it's not, I'm not- I won't go as far as say, like, they have the responsibility to, like, 100% have the responsibility to act proper and stuff. But I do think they have some responsibility. I think that once you become someone, you know, especially, like, if you play a character that everyone loves, say someone in Marvel or whatever, you have the responsibility of, like, of, be res of being responsible. <laughs> When, when you're in something like it, because kids are looking up to you. So many different people are looking up to it. And you will shape a lot of those kids, a lot of those people that are growing up and seeing you as their hero, as who they want to be in some way. And I don't think it's their fault either, because a lot of people are just thrust into these situations, especially kid actors. They don't know how, how to act. Uh, if they become when they become famous like you, you're not fully developed yet you don't know how to really take that it should be it should be something that is brought up and taught up, especially to these kid actors who are going through this they're living a life in the public and people you know the way they talk they, any any news website or stuff they especially like these young girls they'll, they'll like objectify them and like imagine that's all you see one a recent example is billy eilish everyone's like oh show me your body show me everyone's every news outlet is like oh the first chance i get to take a picture of her without baggy clothes it's terrible like what is that doing to someone who's still in development who's someone that like i think the teenage years are one of the most fragile years because you're no longer trusting your parents for everything you're trying to have you're starting to have your own opinions so you don't know what to trust you don't know who you are 
you were very insecure and that's normal it's part of what those years are but then you have all these opinions and then perspectives just thrown onto you and that's what happens to a lot of these child actors so it's terrible i i do think that like there should be not only a, a psychologist or a psychiatrist i always forget the one that doesn't give you medication the therapist on set or someone to educate these children's stars i'm like hey you're gonna hear a lot of this you're gonna see a lot of this but don't believe it this is not reality these are just people trying to make a buck off of you and i just it, it really makes me sad that's something because then they so many of them end up being so messed up when they grow up and you know and people and there are people that look up to them and even in the messed up stuff they do that normalizes the messed up stuff they do because again people look up to them and they idolize them so you know i i just wish that there would be more responsibility in, in just anywhere where you're a public figure and you and even adults like some some people just don't know how to deal with that so i, I just wish it was a more normal thing to teach that because we learn things like math and stuff like that but i feel like and we could go into a whole political thing of ed ed the education system, but I think in most places in the world, there isn't a... There aren't classes on how to be human. <laughs> and oddly enough, I think that that's something we need. I feel like more and more it seems like society's breaking apart. Because people don't know how to treat each other. People don't know how to be good and live in a society <laughs> and I'm not gonna sit here and say I have the answers to that but I, I think it should be a focus when you're growing up of something you're being taught maybe that should be something that is integrated into the education system I don't know I don't know how I don't know but it could probably help a lot of people on just like not to be terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's my that's my rant on society. My nightly rant. I don't actually rant a lot. <laughs> that's my rant. On people and stuff. Because honestly, the only reason I rant or even come close to a rant is because I, I want the world to be a better place. I want it to be a good place. I don't want people to have to suffer or anything else. Just want people to have the ability to live, be happy, and... Yeah, I mean, I mean that's, that's kind of it. Just... <laughs> Best TED Talk. Uh, yeah, just have the ability to be happy and, and really... Oh, leather helmet really be able to do that and that isn't just a selfish thing again since we all live in a society that is just as much about how you treat others as how you treat yourself and i, I don't think that most people really even think about okay. two okay put them here boris come back I just want to give you food. When you want to feed a pig, but they don't want to be fed. <laughs> Sorry, I got deep there and philosophical. It's just that, I don't know. That is something I'm passionate about. And that's why if I were ever to make it big as a streamer or something, like I would treat that with a lot of care. Because I think you have to when people are looking up towards you. Yes, I agree. It does. Yeah, just, uh, I feel like they're 
Breath of the Wild is one of those games that there are games before Breath of the Wild and games after Breath of the Wild, where maybe if not the main formula or like something, one of the big factors, they're pulling something from it. This in more ways than one. I loved the statistic when Breath of the Wild came out and the Switch, that there were more Breath of the Wild copies than Switch sold, like specifically for the Switch, because it was out on the Wii U too. There were somehow more Switch Breath of the Wild copies sold than Switches. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, it's probably a situation like that where multiple people want to be playing. No, that makes no sense. Because you, you'd still need the same Switch. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Bam, yeah, okay. Um... Why? Why? <laughs> Why can't I do it there? I can literally put it into the wall. <laughs> I know, I know. It's terrible. I just can't place things in the right. Ark is the perfect bad Unreal Engine whipping... Yes, yes. <laughs> Ark. As we were talking about that when the first day I, I was playing this game. I was like, wow, this is immediately better than... <laughs> Sometimes, with a lot of these games, hats don't sit well. <laughs> they look like they're on top of your head, especially when it's a customized character. Uh, granted, this doesn't have very deep customization, but... So, I'm surprised. I'm pleasantly surprised. Wait, why am I hunting pigs again? I'm done. I'm done, I could take on the boss. I'm gonna try to take on the boss. Speaking of which, <laughs> I just decided to work out a muscle that I completely forgot about on my legs, and it burns so much. It's like I, I don't know the name of the like the muscle or whatever, but it's like the outside on your thighs. And I was like, why does it hurt? Why does it burn so much? It's the worst. I would call it the oppo horse muscle because it's the opposite of what hurts when you ride a horse. Rods. Doesn't know anatomy, creating his own anatomy. This weapon is strong, but it has terrible range. The club was so much better. I don't know how aggressive the boss is gonna be, or if it's gonna be more of a hunt. So do I put... Offer item. Um... Do that. Four. Um, does me not feeling rested have to do with this, or was it ran? Incomplete deer tro- I need another deer trophy. Man, I ate food and everything. I was ready to go. I actually really do enjoy how they, they do their health and stamina system. I personally, from the games I've played, I had never seen- Are you serious? That's one thing they need to add. When I look down, I want to hit down. But I like how you can stack different foods and different stuff to improve it in different ways. Pull out all 12 of them. He's gonna give it. I don't care. I'm never gonna use... Put more meat here. I'll cook the rest of this meat. I'm ready to fight. My stamina bar is big too. Ooh, actually, I didn't get to look at- Look at this dude. He's ready to go. He's ready to fight a boss. Upgraded stuff. Let's go. Let's fight the fog machine. Fog machine. Fog machine. Fog machine, fog machine. All right, I'm gonna first try this boss. All right, bam. Um, 
It didn't work, did it? Alright. Actually, I'll keep the shield on. Something I won't use during the fight is... Okay, 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 okay. This is gonna be aggressive. This is gonna be more of a hunt. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, get out of here. I have the power of physics. Pretty cool though. He did bring the fog. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, I got him. Nice. That I I whiffed, but I'll accept it. Ugh. Too hard. It's too hard for a god. Who can break the birch? <laughs> The birch tree. <laughs> if it's too hard for a god. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh. Thanks for drop. Oh no, he wants to make me over encumbered. Then he'll be using the game techniques against me. This area provides provides great cover for this. Screw you. I'm out. Ooh. I'm fine. <sighs> Hard antlers. Hail warrior! Bird. Congratulations! Return to the sacrificial stones with your forsaken trophy and offer it as a sacrifice to make the gods smile upon you. Thanks, bird. Hey, that wasn't so bad. That wasn't so bad. It's like... <laughs> I remember when I was playing, when I was streaming, uh, I, I don't, honestly don't remember if I was streaming or just playing Bloodborne. And I remember there was this one boss that I just beat first try, and I asked a friend that, like, re was really into Bloodborne and really, like, oh man, I, is this a hard boss? And I was like, no, that's the easiest boss of the game. I know this is the easiest boss of the game, but, like, it's probably one of those things that I was just like sweating. It was like, oh no, it's it's the easiest boss. It's fine. I'm just like, oh. But I'm glad I I had a lot of food and a lot of armor. Because I feel like one of those hits with some of the rag armor probably wouldn't have worked out very great. Alright. Alright. I'm gonna put it. Boom. Oh. oh, okay. Your ability to run and jump is improved. Oh, are you gonna attack me? Okay. I bring tidings. You have been granted the power of Aether. Use it in times of need. Your next target dwells in the Black Forest. Go there, explore the land, and uncover their lost treasure and resources. The Elder Scrolls await. <laughs> it would have been hard if I tried to melee it. That makes sense. That's why you always go with the range. If you go with the range, no one can stop you. I activate its power. Whoa. Wait, where do where do I go now? It showed me where the 
first boss was... Oh, do I have to go to that the small stone? Oh, that's kind of cool. Other small stones... Are the other small stones around here? Or are they, are they around the map and I need to find them? Oh, okay. Alright. Sounds good. <laughs> I was like, wait a sec. That doesn't seem to work. I have a feeling I'll probably want to build multiple... Uh, multiple bases. Because I don't think this one base is going to work out for me. And you get so many resources that it's okay not to just have one base. I think that that's a pretty good cap for the day, though. I think I've achieved what I've... what I wanted to achieve. Now we're in the Black Forest. Boom. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. Hope you had a good night here on the stream, and I hope you had fun watching it. Hope you guys have a good night, and I will see you on Wednesday. Uh, oh no, I still am still controlling. I always forget I'm still controlling the game, so it doesn't really work. But yeah, thank you for coming. I'm gonna go to the menu <laughs> for the music. Ba-da-da, <laughs>